people that have tried Ceph over the years have often complained that it's hard to set up, maintain, and optimize. In this series, Ceph Easy, we want to show you the current state of things and how easy Ceph has become these days. Today, we will look at the Ceph dashboard as the web frontend, and later on, we'll also have a brief look at the Grafana dashboard.com with each installation of Ceph as long as you don't actively deselect it from the installation. So right here already, we see the dashboard. This is our strategic overview of what the status of the Ceph cluster looks like. As you can see, on the left, we have uh, a menu where we can go to different places, and we'll do that in a second. And on the right, in the main page, we do have all these different objects uh, that we can look at. Everything appears to be green. Um, this cluster is the cluster we just installed in one of the other series. Um, it's similar to the one we installed with the CLI and with the UI. So it comes pre-installed with the POC device, the file system and the object service. So this would be now ready for production usage and you can connect whatever applications you want. For the sake of this demo, I have connected some uh, few processes that uh, give us a little bit of background activity on these three services. And uh, so we, we do see a little bit of populated uh, graphs in the demo, just so uh, we, we have this populated in it. It looks a little bit more like your real world usage. You can see that down here, we have some performance counters where we see writes and reads coming in. And uh, this is here where you would strategically look at to see if your cluster is actively being used and potentially also overused. Um, but up here is uh, more of the capacity and uh, the, the overall size of your cluster. Now let's look deeper into the, the cluster menu on the left. Obviously house will give you the overview of the house and what kind of services are running on each. Um, then physical disks or the disks per host that are being used to provide the Ceph service. Monitors um, is the monitor service. Um, this gives you an overview of the running uh, monitors. They should be on different servers and the different versions. Um, we also, over the course of this dashboard demo, we will see little charts like this that always give us um, a strategic, strategic overview of what the uh, performance looks like and we can dive in deeper with the Grafana integration. Uh, the service is where we uh, deploy and manage services over the whole cluster. Um, for this sake, we already have all the services we need, so we don't need to change anything here. OSDs are the object storage devices that provide the storage from the disk to the cluster and they distribute it. Here again, we see those strategic overviews here and we can immediately see that they're all a little bit busy, especially um, the, they're doing um, writes and reads over here and this looks a little bit uh, active uh, to say the least. We can always see this overall performance tab over the course of the demo and this will often um, give us an iframe into Grafana and uh, give us an overview of important dashboards that we want to look at. So let's just wait a second for this to load and here we are. Um, we uh, This is a dashboard for the OSDs. So it gives us an overview of each single disk and how used it is. Um, very important for ops people is the latencies. So we first have this as a table with the highest, uh, first by read and then write. And then we have this uh, colorful uh, chart over here. So we have an over time view at the average max and uh, 95 percentile for read and write. Um, also, we want to look at the read-write profile. So for this demo, it's a FIA processor. It's very even 
um, evenly distributed between reads and writes. Um, so there's not much change here, but um, we could even zoom in here, look at this more closer and have a good overview of our uh, use case and usage from, from the customers. Configuration is the Ceph config. Um, this has been centralized and now we can go in here. We can click on a couple of these and um, let's see if we find one that we want to add it like this one. We could click on edit. We can set it. Some of those you cannot edit uh, as you've seen over here, uh, like the container image. We cannot edit this right here. We could uh, still uh, go into the CLI to edit it. But you see those editable uh, hooks here that show you when you can edit something. The crush map, usually you shouldn't uh, have to deal with it, but it's here, it's a graphical uh, representation of the, uh, the Ceph cluster, how it's built up. Uh, the manager modules, uh, self-explanatory. The, the manager itself has Python modules that can be activated and this deactivated on demand. Uh, for example, one is the insights that sends back inside information for the upstream uh, people to have an overview of what kind of Ceph clusters are running out there. Uh, we also have the disk prediction, which is a very interesting project uh, by Urit that uh, looks at the smart values of this and tries to predict when they will fail in the future. Um, logs, you see your typical Ceph uh, watch output that a lot of people uh, still use to watch the Ceph cluster. Um, so you can go in there, have it in your browser without uh, going into the CLI. And then you have uh, monitoring, which um, could show you some active alerts. If something is wrong, a note or a disk is down, you would see it here. Um, you can also see the configured alerts um, and the silences of alerts, if, if you have any. Now, this is the con cluster configuration. Let's uh, put that back in there. Um, the pools, oh, um, that is probably the, the place I would start when I um, come from the dashboard. I see high usage. I am, I'm worried about the performance. Here, it gives you a nice overview of uh, performance by pool. So you can see that uh, we have um, usage on the RBD, we have usage on Radius Gateway, the metadata here, um, and the uh, bucket data and index, but also the file system here has some usage, a little bit at least. Um, and then obviously you can always dive into the overall performance again, which loads the Grafana part, which goes a lot deeper in, in more details. Let's wait for that <laughs> to load. Uh, this is probably going to be the last time we're going to look at the uh, Grafana iframe. So I just wanted to um, show you a little bit um, how that integration is done into the Ceph dashboard. So you really don't need to go anywhere else. You can just do it all from uh, the Ceph dashboard. From And I, I think the integration has been done nicely so that um, you don't really feel that it's a, it's a different um, product that's just been <laughs> imported here. So here we have the pools, pool count. Um, we see the other IOPS, we can even filter for that. So the most IOPS goes to the, yeah, well, Radius Gateway, File System. Um, RBD has around 100 IOPS right now. We can also filter by bandwidth if we're interested in that. Um, and we do see the replica or the type of the pool that we have to find here. They're all replica three. We could also have a ratio coded pools, for example. Um, yeah, and we can go down, then we get charts about all that information as, uh, um, as well. Now for the uh, POC, storage. Uh, we can go to images. We would see we currently have two images. One is field test, one is RBD test. RBD test currently 
is actually not consuming any storage due to thin provisioning, and the FIA test um, is actively uh, consuming all its storage to 20 gigabytes on disk. Uh, we can configure, we can create new block volumes. We can also um, obviously delete them. And we can create namespaces to separate RBDs uh, between tenants. We have a trash. And then uh, again, we have the overall performance tab to go to Grafana. We can set up RBD mirroring if you want to, or we don't want to at this point, or look at the iSCSI gateway if we have it configured, which we don't at this moment. There's an NFS uh, section here. We don't have NFS um, configured on this cluster, but if we had, we could look at this here um, and the storage backend and the access type and, um, and the performance. But what we do have is a CephFS volume. We call it FS test. We can go in here. We, uh, we see that uh, we have um, it running. It's quite active again. Um, and we do see a little bit of overview down here. But more importantly, we see there's one client, um, which is my FIO that's running. And when we go to our directories, there's no uh, subdirectory, there's just this one. We could even create a snapshot for this. So when we say we want to create a backup, we can create a snapshot of the whole CephFS volume uh, instantaneously and then back that up. And that's a consistent state um, versus just grabbing it off of an NFS uh, service. And then again, we have the, the Grafana inlay for the performance of the file system. We're not gonna go into that detail here. The object gateway, uh, we deployed that with two daemons, so it's highly available. Um, I'm currently actively pushing and pulling information just for the, um, the daemon on Ceph Demo 1. Um, if I had configured some kind of HA proxy or some reverse proxy that would run Robin the um, the access, then that would use both. But um, we could again look at the overall performance via Grafana, but um, that's not as important right now because we can we can see that in Grafana itself again. There are a couple of errors, but they're not uh, fatal. The, the dashboard loads nevertheless. It just tries to uh, get access to some more information that are just not available here. But what's interesting here is it's actually very easy to um, use the object gateway to configure it. Uh, we can use it to create users. Um, so we can use a demo uh, user here, um, define quotas, and then have the S3 key auto-generated. Um, so let's do that. If we do that, shows up here, we can open it up can get access to its keys and copy them to our S3 client. If we need more keys, we can also create those keys in here by editing the user and clicking on create key. Let's do that. Now we have a second set that's being generated once we save. And now we have two sets of of keys that we can use in our clients if we want to. Obviously, keys can also be deleted when we edit this user. Um, with a configured user, you can then go ahead, create buckets, and give those buckets an owner. So let's do that. Uh, we create a demo bucket, and the owner is our new user. And now, with the credentials we have created, we could go into that bucket and start writing objects to it. Uh, I'm actively currently writing to the CBOM bucket as my CBOM user, and you can see that um, we have use capacity in there with almost 6,000 objects. 
um, so not a lot of option, uh, not a lot of uh, capacity, but a lot of objects that it's distributed over. Um, and then obviously with such buckets, you can create, edit, delete again. You can enable versioning, for example. Um, and um, you can enable the locking feature, for example. All right. Um, this is about it, what I wanted to show you in the dashboard. And uh, if we switch over to Grafana, it's also available via your uh, regular uh, Ceph notes. Um, it's a module that's been installed in the manager and you can uh, reach it on port 3000. Um, it doesn't require any authentication out of the box, but you can um, configure it as you like. And then once it's up and running, you find the default dashboards in the Ceph dashboard folder. And this is also quite interesting to use. Um, these are mostly the ones that are imported into the dashboard itself. That's why it's called Ceph dashboard. But we can also look at them here. Some people like to look at it uh, straight from the Grafana interface.